Welcome, welcome, welcome to Basketball Heads Live. I'm your host, Glenn Poole Harding. Tonight, we got a very special guest. This basketball head is an Archbishop Malloy great who kept the point guard position alive between the Kenny Smith and Kenny Anderson era, but definitely made a name for his own as a tough, heady, high IQ point guard. After Malloy, he attended Brooklyn College and then Trinidad State, JUCO. Then what you know, he bounced back to Division One status when he signed a letter of intent to attend Portland University for the last two years of his eligibility. Just a kid from the East Coast, balling out in the West Coast Conference, this basketball head always represents New York City to the fullest. Now you can catch him coaching Team Rio, the nationally ranked AAU club. Without further ado, help me welcome to the show Archbishop Lloyd Great and Portland University standout, and now the head coach for Team Rio, Adolphus. Call me AD, Gaffney. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Yes. 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 You have you just stepped out into, into, into the world, world, world of chaos. chaos. Where everybody, Where everybody goes, goes hard. hard. Come on. Come on. Go hard. Go hard. Go hard. Tickets because the game about to start. All right, what's happening, man? What's going on, man? Oh, man, it's all good, man. It's all good, man. Good to have you on the show, brother. Appreciate it. Appreciate the love, man. Appreciate the love. No doubt. My man, Pat Alfonso, like, yo, you got to get my man on. Yo, he's putting a lot of work out here in these streets, man. I like, yo, I know, I know, I know. Trust me, I know. Yeah, yeah. Me, me and P go way back, man. Like bell, like, like bell bottoms. We go way back, man. <laughs> Well, man, listen, you, you you keeping the fire lit, you keeping it going on, you teaching the next generation, man, so salute to you, man. Appreciate it, brother. I see you I see you out in these streets, too, working, man, keeping this thing going, man. It's been a pleasure following you. That's brother. right. Keep, keep up the good work, man. Appreciate that, man. It's that New York City basketball brotherhood, man. No, no doubt, no doubt. For life, for life. Yeah. No so who introduced you to the game, brother? You know what? Um, Crazy, crazy story. Uh. Actually, it was my mom's, quiet as kept. Back when we was, uh, me and my brother, we were um, living out in, out in Queens, Ravenswood. My, mo- my mother, she was a basketball player when, she was, when she, she was young. She played in high school. Obviously, the rules were a little bit different then. Obviously, playing on the women's side. And um, she took us out to the park, showed us how to shoot, shoot all these like underhand shots and all those crazy things. And uh, we just fell in love with it then. And from then, I say I was about probably about nine, ten years old. It's been it's been part of my life, big part of my life ever since. So yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, salute to your moms, man. Yeah, For no sure, doubt. man. Shout out, shout out to the queen. Everybody knows who she is. That's right, man. I, I love to give love to the parents and those people who introduce us to the game, right? Because it's such a special thing, it's such a special connection that you have, and something that we never forget. And it kind of helps us in life further on. No doubt, no doubt, no doubt. Yeah. So, uh, what part of New York City are you from? Well, I, I, you know what? I was born in Queens, moved to Brooklyn for a little while. Um, through my early, you know, elementary days, to move back, move back to Queens when I was around eleven years old, and been in Queens ever since. So, early part, of, early part of my elementary days, I lived in BK, um, but born, born in, in, in Queens. And then, you know, finished out in Queens. Okay, okay. So when you became, you know, above age, you start going out and playing ball in the park, right? And you playing half court, 21, Utah, whatever it is. Who's like the the man around the way? Who's the best player in the neighborhood at the time? Uh, you know what? It, you know, <laughs> it's, it's funny because, 
you know, we, I, I done moved around to a bunch of different neighborhoods. I done lived out on Ravenswood, lived out in Left Rack, uh, lived out in Hollis, lived out in Southside. So, you know, there was, and, that, and that's part of, uh, I guess, part of my story too, is wherever the neighborhood I was in, I was always looking for the best opportunity, the best ball. Mm. Uh, I will tell a, a, a quick story when I was when I was out in Left Rack. Um, and this is part of this is part of the lineage too, um, and I give a you know give a big shout out to Vince, Vincent Smith, Kenny Smith, Pierre Turner, Smooth. all yeah. these cats. That that's you know that the whole Amy family. That's that's really where I really took off. Um, and, and to your point, I uh, was in uh, in Lost Battalion Hall, and um, we was playing whatever, and I must have scored like the last last three baskets. It was point game. And I scored on this cat. I told him I'm about, I'm about game over, right? And and I didn't know at the time, you know what I'm saying? Like I was like I was one of them cats. I was kind of like always had like a chip on my shoulder, you know what I'm saying? So, and I was a little cocky. And Vincent goes to me after I score a game and walked off the court. Who got me? I was like, who got next? So Vin, so Vincent comes over to me, you know. And like I said, he's you know he's Vincent is probably about six, seven, maybe about eight, nine years older than I am. And I was Kenny, and I didn't even know who Kenny Kenny Smith was at the time. This is back the time when Kenny was, he was like the hot shot king back then, back the Pepsi hot shot back back then. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, yeah. So that so that's what Kenny was, and I didn't even know, I didn't even know. So he goes, "You can't shoot." I'm like what? Can't shoot? He goes, you just see me just do them? He goes, "You can't." Shoot. Your voice went out. Yeah, hold on. Your vocals. Hold on. Hold on for a sec. Yeah. Fix your arm. Uh... Can't hear you. Yeah, we good. There you go. Hear you now. Yeah. Yeah, so he was like, "You can't, you can't shoot, whatever." Mm -hmm. Wrong way till you get his uh camera together real quick. I think his phone is buffering. Yeah, we back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was I can't crazy. really see you now. Bring the phone down so. Good? No. Nope. Only can see the top of your head. Bring it down some more. Some more. No. Bring it. Yeah, bring it front. There you go. Dude. Come on. Some more. Some more. Got it. There you go. Modern, modern technology. Anyway, so, so the story. So, so, so he put me through this workout, and it was like the hardest thing I ever done in my life. And right. uh, from that, from that day on, you know, he taught me to. Obviously Hold on, for a can, can you move the camera down? Move the camera down some more, man. Yeah, there you go. Bring it down the way you had before. It's pointing too much up to the ceiling. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. All right. So, so. It was so like I said, it was the hardest workout I ever been through in my life. And from that point on, like that he was like everything every word that he said, I listened to because he he challenged me in a way that nobody else had challenged me. And from then on, like, you know, they say about New York guards can't shoot and whatever the case may be. Yeah. He was like he taught like the fundamentals, the whole, you know, we have the lunch tray and the whole thing to follow through and what we're supposed to do. And from then that from then on I became, I made it my point to be a good shooter. But also knowing how, what hard work is, like he would teach us, you know, give us these workouts. And you know how like these kids have trainers now? Like you think right. they need people to work them out. He taught us yeah. you know, that we don't need a, that, a trainer. Like he, he'll teach, show me a workout, now go do it yourself. It's like, That's I, right. you know what I'm saying? So, so, that, so that was one of the things. So he's been a, a big inspiration to me. You know, since, since then, since I was about twelve years old, so that's about almost forty something years, bro, which is crazy. Wow. So, yeah, yeah. So much respect to him, and and like I said, I, and that's one of the reasons 
that I coach now and I give back because I had guys like that in my life that, and don't get me wrong, I was a little knucklehead too, but but basketball, to your, to, to actually one of the first questions you asked me as far as the love for the game, yeah, he kind of instilled, instilled it in, in me a, little, a lot more. So I owe a lot to Vincent Smith. Salute to the Smith brothers, man, for sure. No doubt, no doubt. For sure. So where did that chip come from, man? Because I know you ain't you ain't really take too much from anybody, man. Nah, well, that, that, you know that's that's just that's just how I was wired, man. You know, being be a, a short guard, point guard, and like I said, what, and that's another part of the story too. It's like, you know, everywhere I went, it was always he good, he good, he good, but he's small, he's small. He's and, and, and then once they said you couldn't shoot, you you made sure oh, no, you you tighten oh, no, that up. The worst thing you could tell me is I couldn't do something. Like I, used right. to, it's funny. I, like even even that picture, I, one of the pictures I sent you. I ain't gonna tell you which was coach. You know, coach would say, "Send them left, send them left," and I used to laugh. I'm like, <laughs> and I was, and I would just start skipping. I just go, I just, just, I just black out. I mean, it was it was just crazy. Like coach used to call me like, "You little asshole, you little asshole." I'm a, <laughs> be like, Look. But I'm just no, but but that's the way I, but that's the way I was, man. It's like, right. It's like okay, like. Like, and that's that's another thing. When you tell these kids, like, you're right, your strong hand, work just as hard with your left hand. It became, I got tired of people, coaches saying that, send them left, send them left, to the point where most of the time I, I dribble left. I'll, the ball's mostly in my left hand. I became almost left-handed with the dribble when I'm when I coming up to court because I, it's, it just became, it just took over. The left hand took over. So Well, if, hold on for a sec. Can you make paper? Can you make paper? Is when you right hand in New York City, mm -hmm. that left hand become your boogie hand, yes, right? Because yes, yes. now that that Ross Chickler know what I was talking about. I put that out there. That boogie hand because it allows you to do and maneuver the defense in a way that if you was right handed, it just seemed like you can do it. Yeah, you only could go right, right? Because that's what the mentality everybody would have. It's like when you say it's like when you say go left. It's like that music go off, and now it's time. Right. To do your, you know, do your, yeah, do your thing, yeah, yeah. That's what that's that's exactly. What, and and coach used to be like, yo, I'm like, it's like send them left, send them left. I'm like, no, you just didn't say that. <laughs> yeah, I'll right. Y'all in for it, y'all in for it. So yeah, 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 yeah. So I mean, so I, chip, the chip was just, I mean, it's what it was, and it just fueled me. If you told me I couldn't, man, I coach would say, well, you're not gonna start over this kid. You're not going over. You're gonna do this. You're gonna have to sit behind him. All right, I'm good with that. I'm good. I'm gonna prove and, and like I said, that hard work. Like I don't want nothing hand. I never want anything handed to me. Everything I did, I ha I, I had to earn it. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. But you, that's that's a lesson that kids should learn, right? Because things ain't gonna be handed to you in life. Nah. nah. And, and a lot of kids, if they're not picked first or they're not one of the lead dudes, they usually give up on a situation or quit and be like, nah, I'm heading to the streets. Well, not just put it, keep putting in the work. Yeah. Keep putting in the work because your time will come, right? It's not going to be instant. And a lot of guys who get that instant, by the time you catch them, they probably on their way back down. Yeah, well, a lot, a lot of cats, they peak or they hit that ceiling, and it's like they don't work hard anymore. And that's one of the things I've always, you know, and, and once again, it goes back to that, that day in the gym at Lost with Time with Vince. It's like, yo. You always work hard. You always, you always need to be pushed. I mean, I've done it, and it's helped me in life. I mean, basketball, you know, I, I, I must say, has helped me in life. I mean, it's taught me a lot of lessons that helped me become a better father, helped me become a better professional person. It helps you. It helps you in life. So yeah, those, those are, are things you can't necessarily teach. You just got to go through them. What summer leagues did you play in coming up? Man, I played everywhere. I played everywhere. I played that. I played everywhere, man. It was fun. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Well, you know what? It, it, it's like, like ever since I was like, like twelve years old. So like I would, I mean, I would, I would go to like I started playing for the church. So that was another thing. So so Vincent, uh, brother Kenny was playing for the for Riverside, and so he was like, all right, when you when you're ready, like once again, you out there, you 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 been did what you need to do in the neighborhood. We're gonna take you uptown. So I go up town to Riverside, whatever, and uh, you know make the team. So we 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 start playing uh, in citywide. You know you had citywide back then, but citywide had different different sites, 
in different boroughs. So depending on what's going on. Hold on, hold on for a second. Let me just ask. Do you have a citywide shirt? You know, you know what? My citywide shirt, my Elm Court shirt, my Riverside bags, my Riverside jackets. I had all. I had like I when I when I left to, to go to school, like I just went from Jamaica from when I was in Southside. I left all that stuff with my aunts and my aunts and all that stuff. Dude, I I kept all, all my brother. He took he took some of it too when he was going to North Norfolk State. So he used to rock all my stuff too. But so a lot of that stuff, bro. I, I don't even know where that stuff is now, man. But those are those those are, are things you cherish, man. You look back on them, and those are iconic, iconic, you know, pieces of pieces of material that you you know you look back on. Yeah. Now, you go wow. Pat Alphonse, Pat Alphonse is on a search. We we couldn't come up with anything. The only thing we could come up with was my guy, uh, Michael Messiah, sent me him and his brother citywide ID cards. Wow. Wow, wow! But that, but the thing about it, you know, they changed that logo was the same shirt was the same forever. Yes, yes, ever. Yes, it crazy. represented the city. Yeah, yeah, never see it. Was, it was crazy. So, but um, yes, yeah, so I would go up. So, so I would go leave early in the morning to get my two tokens. My aunt, was, my aunt, and my mom's give me two tokens, right, for the bus and for the subway. That was to get where I was going. How I right, right. Going? That was on me, fam. That's that, like that, like these, like once again, it goes back to these kids now. They get dropped off, picked up everywhere. They get Ubered, they get Ubered, Ubered, Ubered everywhere. So, so I, I, so they gave me my two tokens. It was up for me to f figure out how I get, got back. So I would go up, I would go uptown all the way up to the Bronx, um, to, 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 to the, to the valley. That was one of the sites way up there by Co op City. So I would start there. We play there early in the morning. We come back down, down. To, so after we finish up there, we come back down town, playing Boise yesterday. Yes, yes. Either on Riverside, Riverside Drive or, or 39th Street and Lennox Ave. Then yep, we, yep. Then we shoot downtown to to to, to citywide. To, to, not, to, to the other site, which is on was was uh um, was that 66th Street down there. We go to that. Right, street. right, then, right. Then, then from there, Bye -bye Central Park, by Central yeah, Park. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And then then from there. I would either go to like somewhere like le like Left Rack to finish there, or I'd go someplace like Elmcourt. That was on a Saturday or Saturday. Then from there, then from there, I turn back around, do it again on a Sunday. That's what I did. And then so that's how that's how like a lot of people know me too because I was always touching different spots. Like you know, what I'm saying you see me here next ne next 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 minute, we move into the next next tournament downtown or the next tournament in the next borough, something like that. Um, so yeah, I play. I mean, I played everywhere. Every tournament in Queens, I played in. I played uptown. You know, later on, played in the city colleges and, you know, and, and some of some of them other tournaments we ain't gonna talk about on here that I played. In, <laughs> you know, what I'm you know what I'm in, a, in the money, money, in the money tournaments. Yeah, I, 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 you say I hear nothing. You say just that. I hear nothing. You say just that. You know what I, mean? I, I don't know about that. Yo, bro, you 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 forget. I, I'm a fellow New York baller too. So, know, know, but anyway, we're gonna we're gonna get into the next question. I know. Um, so I, I my next question was gonna be why well, Malloy, you know, and why not Malloy? But I see you had some mentors. Yeah, yeah. Were they were they staring you in that direction? Well, it, you know, once once again, it was like, and like I said, you know, things are a lot different now than how they, now back then and. Of, I'm of a certain age. We always respected our elders. We always yeah. looked up to our elders. Some yes. of us came from one parent households or moms work or the parents worked, whatever. So, you know, I had, like, once again, I had, you know, from, from Mr. B at LBA L, at Lost Battalion Hall, from Vincent, um, you know, Mr. Lloyds, whatever that, you know, that is, that is there, um, um, Pierre Turner. Um, you know all these these guys that were influential in, in in my life, and then we all and then also as a player, you know we didn't have YouTube, we didn't have you nope. know, somebody up on Google. So so when you nobody was walking around with a big ass camera, so no, we didn't, but, we, but but we didn't have any of that. So when you saw, no. when you saw somebody play, or 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 you or somebody said watch, you know, you know like I became a student of the game. And I always like try to pick little things up from everybody that I watch. Like, I, and, and Kenny was a, you know was a good example of somebody that you know act you know once again he's a, a great great individual, great human being, um, good student. I was a good student. I was an upperhead, 
But I went to, you know, I went to pub, went to public school. I was always in the smart classes. You know what I'm saying? I was always like the bell ring. I'm by the bathroom hanging out with everybody, talking to the chicks and, and hanging out with my my my, my dudes. And then I'm the last one in the class. But meanwhile, I got all the, all the honor students in my class, but I'm still, you know, I'm book smart, whatever. So it was like I need I, I need to make sure I, I stay on the right path. And Malloy was a great was a great opportunity. You know, it's, it, back then it was tough to get into. Like, but you know, and don't get me wrong, I could have went to, to these other Catholic schools, the Christ the Kings, the McClancy's. All I mean, I could have had my pick any, but I I pretty much wanted to follow the path of Kenny because that was kind of like, he was like, I, I looked up to him. You know, I, I, I said, I'm a grown man, no, 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 it is what no, it is. No, no, it's all good. You know this is, like, like, yeah. Because he, cause he set a good example for me. And that was like, you know what? I want to make sure, you know, I, you know, I got cast that, you know, I could have went this way and that way, whatever. I wanted to stay on a certain path because I wanted a better life for me and my, for me and my family. And that was kind of what it was. So, Malloy was that opportunity, um, and that's why I went to Malloy. It was challenging. Like I said, nothing was given given to me at all. Um, you know, no promise. Was, was not, it's not like Mr. Current recruited us. It's like back then it was no, and that's the crazy thing about it. It's like okay, you come in when you showed up, whatever he had. That, that was obviously that changed over the years, but he really didn't recruit. You, it's like it's like other schools recruited you, you recruited Malloy. And that was kind right, of right, right, right. That was kind of right, right, right. like that was kind of like the difference. Like, I mean, I know you know cats that I played at the church with. I know half my team was going to a talent time or this school or that school, and it was and it was all good because that was you know we had that was the plug that was there. But as far as us, you know, later on it became a different situation. But when I was coming, it was like, yo, I want to go there, and I want to you know I want to be challenged, and that was kind of why I went there. So yeah. Who was your toughest competition back then? In, in high school? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was, man, I mean, Catholic school, you know, CHSAA was, was, was tough, man. I mean, we had, we had, uh, Talent Town was tough. Um, Christ the King was always tough. Um, who else? On the Brooklyn side, you had Lachlan, who was tough. Um, back when, you know, James Majors was, you know, was there. You had Zavarian was tough. When Paco and them was there. I mean, we did, bro, it was the, yo, Catholic school was, I mean, even in Queens, like, even in Queens, you had, like, Holy Cross with the Band-Aid, Derek Chivas, he was there. Um, but right, right. You can name, so, like, it, it was and it, it was crazy because, and, and, and this is the other thing, too, it's like, like, these kids, they come in as freshmen. They expect to play varsity as a freshman and this, that, and the other. If it ain't right, they move on. Bro, you ain't played varsity as a freshman, bro. Right, you play, right. Bro, you played freshman basketball. And you sat and you waited and whatever. And that was it. So once again, it it, it, it was like a rite of passage. You had yes. everything you, you had to sit back and like this. I mean, I remember, I remember, I remember Chibba, Chibba, Chibs, when Chibs, when Chibs came to came to Malloy, I, he came the year after I left. Bro, he Coach Curran sat Chibs the first quarter every game. Chibs never started a game as freshman year at Malloy. So, no. It's not to be funny. Hold on. I want to make some noise for that right there because. Yo. And Kenny didn't have a problem with that. And the only reason why I'm making some noise because that was the only reason why we was able to beat them. Because if you'd have played all four quarters. Bro, like we'll talk. He sat there like. This like, guy had 21 points in three and a half quarters. Bro, but that's what I'm saying. Like, the, you like you better get that. And didn't whine, didn't complain. He, he, said, he sat there, Coach Curran right there, he sat right there. And whatever it was, it, it was whatever it was. He know after the, the first quarter's off, that that that, that uh, warm-up was coming off. And it was Man, it was we fast. was just wait. We was trying to do everything we could before this guy got in the game. And even 30 years later, when he came on the show and we talked about it, he said, yo, G, coach wanted me to do that, and I ain't have a problem with it no, still to this day. Bro, you know what? It's so let's, loop, let's, let's make some noise for Kenny Anderson right there, man. Like, that's right. That, 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 that's, that's, my, that's my guy. Man. Yeah. And, 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 it, and that's the other thing, too. Like, even like Coach Curran, like some of the things that Coach Curran did, like, I ain't, like, like, I didn't understand them back then, but, you know, look, that's the way it was. That was the local yeah. law. 
and you didn't yeah. have to back on it, now I see why. You know why he you know why he did it. And like a lot of times he would do things to test you, to see what you were made yeah. of. And I, and I, and once again, it prepared like he prepared prepared me for life, man. Like I like one of the things I always say, but I wish my sons, you know, he was still around because I wanted my sons to go there, but they didn't have the opportunity because he passed away. But you know, but it, but it, but still he instilled a lot. Like anybody that with the Malloy, you know, they'll, they'll all say the same thing. Jack is like like you know he that dude that all of us, man. You know, no, nah, definitely legendary and rest in peace. Yeah. So we're gonna get to your sons later. But um let's talk about the spelling of your name, man, and the problems it caused over the years. It's funny, over the years, it still does. <laughs> well, well, man. Yo, yo, I was, yo, <laughs> yo, I get you know, it, it's it's it, it's so many stories behind it, and it's like no matter where like that's why, like when, like when you look people up, you it's like the spelling of my name. Like you, obviously, the internet now, you look at it. You know, you spell it with an I S. You spell it with a O, with a U S. You spell it with a with a O in the middle instead of a U in the middle. Yeah. And then, and then, and then, on top of that, so like everybody, they don't well, call me a, a Dolphins, right? So everybody butchered that name, whatever. So around when I was 16, 17, Everybody started calling, but actually probably a little bit before they, they, they started calling me AD. Let's cut that short. Let's just use the two, the two initials, I AD. And plus, back before then, I was wearing number four. That was the other thing. I was wearing number four, and I was a big fan of Adrian Dantley back then, too. So that's yes. how yeah. AD came, came about. So, like, like even my professional name, and, like, nobody in, in the professional world, nobody calls me by my, I call my government. Nobody calls me by my government. They don't even know, they don't even know my name. They, they know me as AD. They didn't right. call me DR or a whatever. They mess. They they mess. They butcher that up too. But it's like everybody since I was 16, 17, has been calling me AD, and it's stuck. It's stuck to me this whole time. But but it's but every even, even when I get somebody in my license and they try to bring, they look at it, and I just start laughing because I'm like, go ahead, try it. Go ahead, and, go, and they'll say it, and they're like, hey, a Dolphus, a Dolphus. They, they go what? They go. And they'll, and they'll say, oh, I know somebody. Oh, that's a kid. I'm like, whatever. Whatever you, I'm like, look, call me AD. It's, and, and like I said, it's, it's, it just stuck with me. So, yeah, that's what it is, man. Everybody, since I was 16, 17, and it just stuck with me. Even my mom, she don't, she, my, my mother, she don't even call me by my government. She called me D. She called me DD Adapt, AD, whatever. She, she don't even call me by what she named me. And, I, and, it, and it, it's after my, my grandfather. That's where the name comes from. So my mother named gotcha. me my, my gotcha. grandfather, but obviously, you know, Trying to be different or trying to pay respect to him, it caused me a, a, li a life, uh, a lifetime of strife when it comes to names, brother. So yeah, yeah. So so you so you, so, so you butchered it. You were not the first. You sure enough won't be the last, fam. You sure enough won't be the last. <laughs> hey hey man, and and I got a problem. I fixed it right up too. No doubt. Yeah. No doubt. We'll so what was the recruiting process like for you back then? You know what? It was. <laughs> It, that was that was that was crazy too. Like so, coming out of um, once again coming out of high school, it, you know it was different. You didn't have you know all these you know uh, these these camp websites, all this other stuff. And we ain't, we didn't really have AAU. We were more club teams back then. So you played locally, and then you might have played in a tournament, BCI, one of them joints out in you know Arizona or, or like California. If you were lucky enough to play for the church or the Gauchos, one of them. So. I um I had a good I had a good junior year. Um and uh so quick story, I had this and this is this is how powerful Mr. Curran was, and I didn't even know it at the time. So he goes to me, this is after Kenny had um went to North Carolina, you know, all these different coaches came through. I, and so when they all come through, they all come through and kiss the ring, see Mr. Curran. Even if yeah. going, even if they were and, and like I said, I once again I didn't know it at the time. Like you either landed in JFK or LaGuardia, Malloy stuck right in the middle of, of both of them. So when you came into town, that was usually, you know, like you got to go have a, uh, uh, go to Cat's Deli or have a Junior's Cheesecake. You had to go right. to the That was kind of the thing. So I met all these different coaches, whatever. So, so, um, Kenny went to Malloy. All right. So then the next year, so then behind him was this little, this little, uh, guard, John Martinson, kid from Rockaway. He was, so he was, he was my, he was in the backcourt my junior year. So the thing about it, he said to me, he said, well, John's going to start. All right, that's fine. Play, he's going to play the point. 
All right. So you're gonna have to come up. You're gonna have to come off behind them. All right. So every day in practice, I wore John ass out. Part my French. <laughs> so so by like so so that picture that I sent you, right? The one down in Myrtle Beach in the, in the, in the Belt Beach World Classic tournament. That was the first game. That was like that was like the third or fourth game. That was the first. That was the first game I started. I was coming off the bench before then. After that, mm. I started the rest of the, the rest of the time. But I wasn't playing a point. I was f playing the two. He let John play the point and let me, and I played the two. I'm five, not eight on a good day, right? So, so eight, two. But that, and that's the crazy thing about it. So I'm, I'm off the ball, and that's why I said, whatever it was, he, it was a challenge where, wherever he did it. But he wanted to get Martinson looks. Long short of it, Martinson went to wound up going to Georgia Tech, is where he went. Um, and, and big white boy Steve Kratz wound up going to Richmond. So well, anyway, have a good summer, good camp, um, good after camp, good whatever, good you know different tournaments at the church, all tournament, all the stuff. So he goes to me, he goes, where do you want to go? I looked at him, where do I want to go? He goes, I can do you just like I did, like Martinson. I can whatever you wherever you want to go. And you know, I'm here thinking, North Carolina, nah. I, <laughs> I was like, nah. I was like, so anyway, so I had like, so I said, nah, I was like, nah, coaches go, whatever I, whatever I earn is where, where I'm so where I'm supposed to go. So I was getting recruited like Navy Academy. So actually Navy Academy this back mm. when David Robinson was still there. Yeah, 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 yeah. But 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 check it out, fam. I can't swim. You do have to after you <laughs> I still can't swim, man. <laughs> so, so, oh, after, shit. So, so after you graduate, you gotta serve five years on a ship. I'm right. Like, nah, we not we not doing none of that. Um I had who else? I had I had like Bridgeport. Manu Bowl. I'm like, where y'all putting me little guard with all these big men? They put one amigo player at Bridgeport, Manu Bowl. Then I had schools like um University of North Carolina, Charlotte. Um I had University of Hartford, and then Brooklyn, okay. and, and then Brooklyn College. So there was all it was like a bunch of schools. But once, but once again, back then, little guards is like, you know, they don't always translate to Division One. Long and short. So Brooklyn College started, uh, you know, got on me, and what they did is they recruited me, and they recruited one of my teammates from Riverside, Andre Blackett, who uh, who went to Talentine. So, right. So long and short. They recruited us together, sort of this package. They played off of that, yada, yada, yada. They sold us on the, the, the schedules. The schedule was crazy. We playing Syracuse. We playing North Carolina State. We playing Ohio State. We doing this. We doing that. We staying home. We could be, you know, big fish in a little pond. I bought it. You know what I'm saying? I bought it. Went there. Um, you know, the year was the year. I had, I had, some, I had there was a lot of, there was a lot, a lot of ups and a lot of downs. Um, so, you know, we played there. I played there my freshman year. Average about eight points, four assists, whatever it was as a freshman. Started, started, you know, 30, 31 games, all the games, whatever. Okay. But but, but things but things weren't weren't kind of right. So I was like, yo, you know, we gotta bounce. And and so I went to Mr. Lloyd. Um, I was like, I need to, you know, so he's like, Well, if you go back to division one, you're gonna have to sit out. You gotta go, you know, junior college route. And that's how I ended up at, at Trinidad State. So Trinidad State went there myself, and, and Mr. Lloyd would send a couple kids from the church there every year or whatever. Um, my year was me, Nate Poindexter, and Anthony Robinson was there before that. Benny Gordon was there, who played the Right, team. right. Yeah, so that was my man, Benny Beagle. He was there. Did his um, and then I went there for, for a year. And the funny thing about it, when I went there, my man, when I got there, Coach Topol, Coach Topol, he got he got he got thighs the size of boulders, fam. Always wear them, you know them, you know them big, <laughs> them, 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 them coaches shorts, them, them, them big. The bikes, the bike joints, the bike joints. Yo, son, he was yeah. <laughs> and his calves be like this, calves like this, and he got this red like reddish brown hair. Coach told me, right. He's like he was like yo, they just came off of um, uh, you know, a finish at the nationals, or whatever the year before. They had a guard there, my man Joe. He was like. He like Joe. He he sat behind Benny. He gonna he gonna he gonna be the point guard. I'm like okay. He goes, you can play behind him, or you can redshirt. 
I said, Coach, I'm only going to be here one year. Oh. So next thing you know, Joe started. All right, two, three games in the season. We played these cats from New, New, New Mexico military. My man Richard House and them. And he couldn't come up. He, he couldn't break the press. Go get him. He, he had a heart. He could, bro, because he could, he could, he couldn't handle that heat. I got in the game, did what I need to do, start the rest of the year. You saw the stats: twenty, he's twenty six or twenty seven and four. Yada yada. yada. I mean, yeah, yeah, we, yeah, I was, yeah, I was, yeah, we did. Them, them, yo, junior college was fun, but it's yeah, bro. We we flew to Colorado to take a bus, another four hours just to get there. Yeah, them, them, them junior college stories is crazy. That's why I said, man. These kids don't. So anybody that's played junior college, and I, I, a lot of my brethren has, they understand what it is, man. So, so I'm like, nah. So all right. So then, I went to um. So we, you know, whatever. I had a couple schools: University of Colorado, North Carolina, Wilmington, uh, back here, um, and the University of Portland. So the, the University of Portland thing happened because they was rec recruiting um one of my teammates, my man from from Fort Lauderdale, Demetrius Hall, because uh -huh. they already had a point guard. All right, this is how, this is how things crazy work out. So they already had a point guard. Their point guard was Greg Anthony at the time. And Greg yeah. Anthony, Greg Anthony yeah. went, to, went to Portland and just taught, just did his thing his freshman year. But he was going back to UNLV. So while they was recruiting my man Demetrius, they saw me. And so men, when they after the season was over, they, they, they got word that, that, that Greg was leaving. They was like, yo, we've been, we've been seeing this guard all this time. And uh, – it was my man, Coach Cassin and, and Jack Avina, who who recruited me to come up there. We went up there, um, you know, and, and, it, and it fooled us because Portland, it rained a lot, right? It rained, it rained, it's the rain, you know, the Rose City, whatever. When we were yeah. there, it rained the whole time. It was so <laughs> they, Salute. They, they fooled us, son. They, 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 had, they called the guys and said, yo, make it sunshine the whole time. It was wow. sunshine. So long and short of it. All right, me and my man meet, say, yo, we yo, let's go to another package deal. Let's go there together. And we went there, went there, and um, and we wanted, and, and the thing about it was, they fought, they wanted to fire Jack during that summer. So me and Meek was there. He was so the coach that recruited that recruited us was gone. So, Damn. Was, so so now we out, we out. I'm two thousand twenty five thousand miles from home. I'm like, yo, all right, we out there, right? And they bring in Larry Steele. Now, Larry Steele, former NBA player, Portland Trailblazer, never, okay. had, never had coached anything in his life. He was an announcer. He was an announcer for the Blazers, but they wanted somebody. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, fam. Yeah, this is politics. This is how politics work. Yeah. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Bring me back. Bring me back. Just bring me back. Bring me back. Say this again. Okay, Larry Steele. Right. I got yes. Resume. Played in Kentucky. Played what? Played in the NBA. Played for the played for the Blazers. Played with Big, Big Red, Bill Walton, all that. He was an announcer for the Trail Blazers. He never coached anything in his life. No, no head coach, nothing. So they gave him the job because uh, University of Portland has a dome. It's called a Child Center. So they figured he'd be the the face of the program. It'll draw people to the Child Center. He looked the part. He looked the part. Oh, he looked. Oh, oh, oh no, oh no. He was running. He was running for councilman. He was running. He was a. He was a politician oh, for real. Got you. And got so, you. Got so, you. So, 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 so here we go. He didn't recruit. So he didn't recruit me. So he didn't recruit me. Whatever he was left with, you know, whatever Jack Avina had had left over. So I wind up. You know, we wind up. We ain't really. We, once again, we ain't really hit it off. And um, he he basically started. He he basically started every other guard. He went through four guards before he got to me, right? Right. I, but I've still played like every game. I mean, I'll never forget this. We were about to play. So we played in the West Coast Athletic Conference. So that was Pepperdine. That was Loyola Marymount with, with Hank and Bo and them. That was they, they, so Gonzaga wasn't good like they are now. So the, right, the, right. the cream of the, co the conference was, was um, Loyola Marymount, Pepperdine, and like Santa Clara. Those are like – and St. Mary's. Those are the best best teams. So we we about to play. Um, it, the, the 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 bump is uh, Pepperdine. Our, our bump was Pepperdine and Loyola together because those are the two 
like California, like the uh, LA team. Oh, they, there was in the NCAA every year. Yeah, so but but that Pepper was Don was Pepper Don was set, upsetting a lot of people back in yeah, the day. Yeah, still and that because that because matter of fact, the kid that went to went to USC with with Bowen Bowen um Hank was Tom Lewis, white boy went okay. to my nice. So so that was that was their crew. So we play, so we would play them back to back. We played one on a Thursday, they played the other on a Saturday. So. So the so the little guard the guard that was ahead of me, he was a, he was a local kid that was playing. We called him we called him high five because he always high five. It looked like Barney Rubble. He was always high five at dudes. So we called him high five. High five got like model. He's like all right. So then he looks. So then he comes. You know. And meanwhile, I'm dragging people to practice, but it is what it is. So he goes to me. He goes um, um John got mono. Um, you, uh, you know, you next, you next up. You're gonna play. I'm like, okay, all right, cool. He goes, you nervous? I'm like, nervous. I looked at him like he was crazy. I'm like, what? You know so, where I'm from? So long, so long and short of it, right? So, so I guess we wind up playing Pepperdine. We only lose by like eight or nine points, whatever. Then we play against Loyola two days later, and then we lose to them. But we don't turn like I'm at. We don't turn the ball over. The ball ain't going everywhere, whatever. And we wind up losing them. So. The, the 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 moral of the story. So the next time we played Loyola, so they was scoring like 130, 120 some points a game. Yeah. Right. We lost to them the next two times by six and by three, and both those and all those times I was running the point. So that tells you. So that was like the last seventeen games of the season I played. Right? Did you did, did you guys stole the ball? What was that? Did you guys stall or did you guys just no, play? No, no, you couldn't against them, bro. They, they, because what they did is they, like, what they did is they face guarded you. So they had, they made you, so they, they, they full court press you the whole time. So, so and kind of forced you to shoot. Yeah, so they forced you to speed the game up, or force you to like it's fool's goal. You trying to throw long passes, or you try, you got to run a press offense every time. Got gotcha. you. But what it was like, so, but what it was, the reason I was so good. Against them is because I was always I was on the scout team, so I was I was the guy that did the film all the time on them. So I had to simulate, right. I had to simulate their offense on um I, on, against against our starters. So that's when he told me. So when he so when he he said you're gonna, start, I'm like, dude, I just you just had me go through all. This. I know what they do. So like they would try to press, and I would go get the ball, and I would break the press by myself. They couldn't press it. They would they would they would spear other times because you beat your man. Then you got layups in it, but I was throwing alley oops, catches, missing dunks. Cause what they do is they try, they try to, they literally try to wear you out. And then they get the ball up the floor and they shoot threes. And they figure either they are gonna hit threes or Big Hank gonna come and get the rebound and clean everything up. So, bro, that, mm. it, it was it was crazy. But you you slow the game, you you slow the game. You gotta have patience and slow the game down with them. I mean, but the score it's still gonna be 120s, 130s each time. How how would that style? How would that style of play? Do now in this day and era. Oh, it was it was it would still work. It would still work the way these kids are now. It, 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 but so so the funny thing about that too, right? Like their offense. When I coached, like when I used to when I used to have my younger kids, I used to run their offense the whole time. Like we would press and run it off because it was it's it, like everybody everything now is is spacing the floor and pick and roll and whatever. You didn't necessarily. Like you had a big man, but you used the big man to set picks, and so you leave you leave yes. the big man at the, at the elbow. So, so my bigs, I'm like, you, I go, y'all get rebounds, y'all get putbacks. We ain't calling the offense for you, and that's what I, you know, my my guards run up the floor, my shooters, my point guard get to the rack, or we or we P and R, and we going. That's what we do. So they are so it's great I, I, yeah. So 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 he was ahead. Of, so he was ahead of his time with it. I mean, I mean, they say he was like 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 Paul Westhead was a mad scientist. Bro, it was crazy, man. Like everybody thinks, like, and I'm gonna say this, like Hank was a monster. Hank was a monster, but he's not. He wasn't as skilled as some of these guys are today. He was. Right. So, he was just so athletic and so relentless. But his skill, like, he couldn't shoot free throws. That's why on the free throw line he was shooting his free throws left handed because he couldn't shoot. But but he was a, like he he was a, mo a monster. But these cats today, these kids, and their skill sets. That's the difference in the game game today their skill sets but they it's all here and here with them they don't necessarily have that all the time but their skill set is crazy so they would it would, it would definitely do good if you can run it it definitely works it definitely works yeah mm. and, then, and so and then the next year they brought in my man eric spolster so i played with him for a year too 
Oh, okay, okay. What what was he an uh, assistant? No, no, no. Eric Spoelstra. He would he came, he played at University of Florida too. That was oh. Yes. That was oh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah. My bad, and I forgot he's young too. That that's right, that's right. Yep. yep. How was he as the baller? What was that? How was he as the ball player? He was good. He was good. He was good. He was, he was real good. He was quiet. I mean, he, he's he's a good dude. Me and him chopped up a couple times every so often, but. Like I said, we, we had our battles too, but he's he a good dude, man. He's definitely a good dude, man, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Cool. And you finished up at Portland? Yeah, finished up in Portland. You know, got my degree. Had, he had a couple couple incidents happen, but, you know, and, and like I said, but I finished up there, got my degree. I, I wasn't coming back home without a degree. After That's all, right. That's all right. All hard work. You know, my, you know, like I said, I owed it to myself, owed it to my family, owed it to the people that, you know, looked out for me around the way that, you know, that I had to come on with a degree. And I did, so yeah. Yeah, and, and and I, you know, speak to a lot of guys on here about the transition from basketball to the real world, right? Yeah. And how sometimes it can be difficult for a lot of people. Uh, can you tell our audience uh, how was your transition from basketball <laughs> life to the real world? Well, you know what, it, 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 it's um, you know, uh, reality hit kind of quick because what happened was, you know, I, like when I finished up. Um, I had a couple offers to go play overseas, and but like I said, I was like, nah, I didn't want to be. I, I wanted to, to be here. Um, fortunately, I and this was kind of my uh, start of my professional. I was we were a Nike sponsored school, and um, Nike's out in out in Oregon, in, up in Beaver, about forty five minutes away. So one of my one of my first jobs was working with Nike. So it was like a natural transition because back then they they. They wanted athletes. They wanted people that were involved in sports. And so and a lot of things that I learned in sports, I was able to utilize on the professional side of it. So it, it, uh, basketball helped me out a lot. Being, being a good teammate, being able to listen, being able to analyze things, um, it helped me transition real well to the real world. So That's dope, man. That's dope. How did you get into coaching? Um, coaching, I, I mean, well, because I wanted to give back. Um, you, know, you, you know, like I said, it's one of those things like, you know, they always, always, Vince and Pierre always uh, emphasize uh, being able to give back. Um, so my daughter was, so I, w I would help out um, Riverside coach, coach every now and then when I, when I came home or whatever during the summers. But then I really got started with my, my oldest daughter. So we were actually living in Freehold, New Jersey. And um, she wanted to play, she wanted to play rec, rec basketball. So she signed up for um, the girl, the girls' league or whatever, and I was going to coach. I was like, she's like, Dad, can you coach? I'm like, all right, cool, I'll coach. So the guy that ran the, the rec league was was the old Zaverian coach, Lou Pacola. Coach Pacola, okay. Coach Pacola, who moved out to Coach Neck, New Jersey, he ran the league. So he's like, he's like, Gaffney, I got good news and I got bad news. He goes, you can coach. He goes, he goes, he goes. You no, know, the bad news is your daughter can't play with the girls. It's not enough. He goes, the good news is she can play with the boys, and you got to coach. And that's how I started. So from then on, I, I started coaching her. Then I started coaching boys, and I've been coaching ever since. And this is my daughter's This is probably tw over 20-something, almost 30 years now I've been coaching. Man. Wow. Yeah, I've been, like, like I've been, I was dabbling in it for a little bit. But then when I then I started having kids and I started being involved in them, then I started getting involved. You know, the kids got better. Started getting involved with these programs. You know, next thing you know, you know, I, I've had some of the best kids around in the state of New Jersey and around. Um, you know, and you know when they were coming through, you know, I, I you know I like coaching the younger kids. I've coached high school. I've coached AU. I've coached the, you know on, on on the circuit, whatever. Uh -huh. I like coaching the younger kids because they're 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 moldable, they're shapeable. Um, when they get older, the, the bad habits. If, if they haven't been taught certain things, you got to break all these habits. You deal with every, you deal with a lot of the noise. Younger kids, you can you can mold and shape them and teach them. And like I said, I I got kids now that come up to me and they say, Coach, he goes, we you, you were hard on us, but now we know why. Yeah. You know, because and they go, they go, and they go, we wish we would have listened more um, to you. So that that's an testament. To like, I guess I must have been doing something good. So, yeah. And, and, and how did you hook up with Team Rio? So, um, we had um, so so I so 
That was my daughter. I coached my my oldest son. He was with we were, we were in in JBC um, back then. I was helping run that program, run the um, coach the older guys, and then I started um, coaching. The, the director wanted me to to, to to do middle school and do younger guys, like bring bring a feeder system. So I started coaching my middle son too, Jalen. So what happened is we started like locally. We started locally, and then we just built up. So we went from NJBC to, to we were like this little local team. To then, he was, then we became this little force in Jersey, and then I moved from NJBC to We All One to, to Izod, and then because, and I, but I was getting what happened was I was getting all these kids, and these kids we played against we played against these different teams. We smacked these kids like you, you look at us and like All right, we're gonna beat them. We smack them. We give we thirty piece and twenty piece. And we're like yo, what are you doing? I'm like yo, it is what it is. And, and they were, but the kids were playing just like how I play. Like I like I literally was sick. My kids. Talk, talk, talk. I, I, like I would, I would literally sick my kids on like yo go. I'm like yo get them. I go we pressing them, we pressing them as soon as they get out they call, and that's what it was. So we so so we came this. So what happened? We, I was getting kids from Maryland. I was getting kids from Pennsylvania. I was getting whatever. So we wind up, you know, through politics and whatever else, m you know, meeting up with a bunch of cats because what happened is you get up the ladder, you need money, you need guys yeah. to take care of that. So you know, a couple came at me. We want to. You know, what you guys, and that's how Team Rio. Team Rio formed because me and Brian Clasky, we've been friends for a long time. Um, I was, you know, they were Central Jersey Hawks, and you know, we started doing, you know, we kept in touch, but we would always smack them. Um, and he's like, yo, you can't beat them, join them type. Of, no, this is real talk. You can't beat them, join them type of thing. And um, you know, you know, we and we would still get the best kids, but we wanted to give them a, a platform where we can also. Um, train them as well as develop them. And that's how kind of Team Rio, that was the whole foundation of Team Rio. And Team Rio was partly sponsored by, by Mario Chalmers, but it was also um, a, a training component of that too. And it grew to something that was just crazy. I mean, I had some, like I said, I had some of the best kids in the country at one time. So who actually, are you actually uh, a part of the uh... The heads of the organization, or there's somebody else that 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 runs the organization. Well, somebody else runs the organization now. I, like I try to, I mean, I got five kids. I try to step back. Every, it's like I try to step back, and then they keep pulling me back in. Like I got. Got you, got you, got you. Like, like right now, like I, like I stopped, I stopped coaching because so I wanted to enjoy my son. You know, my son playing but now. They got, but then I have a, my youngest son. He's still playing too. So. I try to help out wherever I can, you know. Coach, coach is in my blood. That's what I do, and um, so I, you know, I, I still do. But I help, I help out every now and then. I have a little development, um, a, a little development a program called Team Gaffney. So we do that every every couple seasons during the year. Um, you know, component of practice, training, as well as games. So that's the you know sort of a, a package per season. You know, spring, winter, fall type of deal. Uh, in, in conjunction with whatever, whatever I do on the AU or AU circuit with um with uh, Team Rio. How, how far are you from Sicklerville? Say it again. You heard me? Not I said, how far are you from Sicklerville? How far from Sicklerville? Yeah. That's um that's down about AC. That's about what forty five minutes an hour. Okay, okay. Yeah. All right. Go more down there. No, no, my brother lives out there. Uh, I have a, a, a grand nephew who who loves the game, and I, I have a feeling that he's going to be great. He's really? one of those kids where you don't have to kind of like, you want to play basketball? He kind of came out like that. Really? Where's, yeah. How old, how old is he? I think Mason, I think Mason got to be six or seven. Okay, 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 okay. But my, my brother would take my brother would take him to the ends of the earth to wherever he needs to go to get to the next level. But you know he's just a kid who who loves the game, and I know someday he's destined for greatness. Whatever well, he does, like like I, like I tell you, bro, I'm I'm here for the kids, man. So anything, anything I can do to help out, um, you know, like like you know, and that's one of the things. Even back back in the day, man, you know, this my home became the kids' home. Like I'm like, dude, your mom dropped you off. They, they, they can go. You, you good here. Right. You know, whatever you need. You know, if you need me to take you home, 
during the week after practice. I mean, you become like a you know surrogate father to these kids, you know, and that, that's that, right. That, that's what you do. Like I, you know, like, that's part of why I do it because, like I said, there were times I was hungry. There was times I you know didn't have and 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 you know for, you know like I said I, I've named a bunch of them. Fred Neal was another one. I mean, I got all, all these guys that at some point helped me out, you know, uh, with, with my plight, which you know I'm fortunate. Um, fortunate with so yeah so I, I that's what that's that's a big reason why why I, I do what I do so when your guy is showing you love Kenny Anderson say he love you yeah. uh Stu yeah. Barnett Stu Barnett wants to say what's up big Stu what up building. you know what I'm saying yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Oh Jason God. Gilliam Jason Gilliam was showing you all kind of love it's like you know that's my guy whatever so definitely you guys stick together man that's, that's dope yeah, yeah. You still there? You there? All right, cool. All right, cool. So, you said your, your, your kid's playing ball or whatever. Um, tell me about your son that's playing ball right now. Who's that, Jalen playing right now? Yeah, one of is at UConn, yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, let's start from, it was your daughter was the first one, right? Yeah, my daughter was the first one. Um, she, you know, she played, little, she played a little bit. She played basketball. She played softball. And then she, you know, she wanted to play all the way through high school, and then she wanted to doing other things in, in college. So then I have my my oldest son, Anthony, who um, actually played basketball and football. Um, he wanted gotcha. he wound up he was a thousand point scorer in basketball. He was um all he was all nepsack in football. Wound up going to Princeton, mm. um, and was five time Ivy League play play player at Princeton. Um, so he, he's, 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 he's finished up. He's working out in California now. Jalen's gotcha. the, the middle child. He's at UConn. Um, and you know, he's a sophomore. Um, Marcus is the, my youngest son. He's a, a junior at Northern Berlin in local school right now. And he's playing, he's playing, uh, football and basketball like Anthony did. And then, gotcha. uh, and then I have my youngest daughter, who's Makaya. She, she plays, she plays a little bit of basketball too. So it's in the family. <laughs> mm, that's dope. That's dope. So give me give me your best high school, college, and pro player you played against. Wow. One of each. One high school, one college, one pro. Okay. Uh, all right. So best high school player I've played against. Oh, toughest. Um, Who? Toughest high school player I probably played against. Uh, um, uh, John Johnson. John Johnson. My God. Tyler Tom Great. Definitely. 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 That's my God. Speak to John all the time. Yeah, John, Johnny Ice Cream. Johnny, yeah, he was, he was, it was, it was him, him and probably. They call him Johnny Ice Cream? That's what we call him, Johnny Ice Cream. You know what he calls him. He knows why we call him Johnny Ice Cream. Lamar, <laughs> when, he when, when he used to play with the Sun Devils, they used to have this play, this clear out play. And he go, Johnny, and he go, Ice Cream, Ice Cream. So we call him Johnny Ice Cream. Got you, got you, got you. College. Uh, ooh. Toughest, well, toughest player there that became a pro was probably Gary Payton. Gotcha. That locks down both of them right there. Yeah, that, that, that was, the glove was. That locks down both of them right there. Yeah, the glove was. Uh, he he was he was different, brother. He was he was like you you had basically somebody coming at that was six three and talk more in a little bit bucking ball like he was coming like he was like yo I'm about that life. He was yeah the glove was yeah different, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Not, not too many people like him, man. Yeah. So, uh, one question I forgot to ask you, bro. What's up? You you played against a lot of dudes, and and starting off, you had a chip on your shoulder because a lot of people doubted you because of your size, and and then you had Kenny Smith saying you couldn't shoot, so you had to prove him wrong. Who asked did you bust to let you know that you was one of those dudes? I'd have got everybody at some point in time. I'd have got everybody. I uh, like. Like I'm like put this way, I'm gonna say this right now. I'm gonna let I, I ain't gonna I ain't gonna put nobody on butt, but that, like no 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 listen listen it's all no, no, good because no, no, we no, giving no, no, they got their flowers right now. No 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 no. What I'm saying is like when you played against me. You I, I, hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on. We gonna save that. 
But we're going to come back because we're running out some time. Then I'm going to show you your artwork, all right? All right. We're going to do that. We're going to do that. We're going to come back. For sure, for sure. Because I definitely want to hear this, fam. I definitely want to hear this. For sure. All right, all right. Who is that, man? We was talking about who asked you, bus, right? <laughs> you crazy, boy. You crazy. You crazy. Listen, listen, listen. Gee, bro, at, at some point, at some point, somebody got to get the business. That's just what it is. This not being disrespectful. No, nah, no, nah, I'm not. I'm, look, I'll never be disrespectful, man. Look, look. I, I remember playing against Mike Morrison. I always tell the story. Mike Morrison gave me 30 and was talking to me the whole game. Mind you, we, my team beat them. Everybody who I say kind of gave me the business besides Anthony Mason, my team won, right? But at the end of the day, you know you in there, you you fighting back, and you giving it back to them. But he was patting me on my back, shooting the three. <laughs> he running down the court. He was like, yo, you good. Don't let nobody tell you you ain't good. You ain't right. you play hell of a defense. Right, right, right. Never forget him. No doubt, no doubt. What was that moment for you, bro? Bro, I, yeah. I, look, I can't remember, man. <laughs> what? No, no, like, One of the toughest guards in New York City history? No, no, no. So my thing is, like, I think a lot of cats was, 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 was good. I had names. But when they went up against me, like, it was like, all right, after the game, good game. Like, like it was never like, you got 30, and I got two. It was like, I I got 30, you got 28. You got 30, I got 24. Like, like and, and every and like everybody I put, like, will tell you that. That's one of the things. Like, like it was no, like, you getting, no, you don't do that. Now, there's some cats I done drug in certain tournaments, but I ain't, you know, that is what that is. That, you know, that is, but, but most cats, and, I, and like a lot of cats you've had on there, they all, I mean, they all, we all boys, we've been played against each other. We don't play with it. That's and that's and that's why I guess I got a, a, so much love for them, and they got so much love for me. That's right. That's so, right. And, and that's why. I, and that's why I say because he, he still said I got everybody. I mean, yeah. I, 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 but but see, but see, I'm I'm always gonna be humble. Like you know what I'm saying? These are my dudes. It's like right. we. It was if you was that dude, you was that dude. But when you played up against me, oh, you was in for it, baby. We was in for it. We 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 go back after the game. We gonna go sip something or whatever. It's all good. Whether it be a quarter water or forty, we gonna do what we do, baby. It's all what it is. It is what it is. Now everybody will tell you that. You know. What That's I mean? right. <laughs> but like I said, we every everybody got it. Everybody got it. Thank you, Stu. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. Still be on here soon as well, man. My God. So man, look, I know you're doing a lot of good things, man, and. You know, you put down uh, your legacy, whatever it is. Nobody can walk in your shoes, right? Yeah, and we, what you created, we, we not, and what you passed it down, and what you passed it down now to your. And what? What you say? I said we're not done yet, baby. We still out here working, man. That's that's what I said. And what you out here passing down to your kids, and what you're doing now for the next generation, for the last thirty years, man. I want to salute to you, brother. Appreciate it. Definitely brother. want to give you a crown. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> for me to you. For sure, man. Because look, we'll, we'll, when the next time we're going to get to tell our story, man, we don't know how the world is going to be in the next five to 10 years. You right about that. You right about you that. You know what I'm saying? And and when we talk about New York City basketball, at least one of us can tell it. Right. right? From the perspective that we were there. Yeah. And now the outsider coming in and, and telling our own story. So we get to write our own story and write our own narrative. Right. No doubt. No doubt. You're right. You're right. You're no right. doubt. Right. So we come to the point of the show where you get to nominate somebody to be on the show. Right. Okay. So if you can't think of somebody right now off the top of your head, please get back to me, DM me, hit okay. me up. I will. I will. Right? I will. I, I, I'm searching for the Adrian Autry. I'm searching for the Brian Reese. I'm searching for the Derek Phelps. I'm searching for these guys. You know what I'm saying? You know, you done had a lot of people on here, baby. That's why. I, that's why I'm like, yo, he. I'm like, he touching them all. You touching them, cats that <laughs> look, bro. Ain't seen look, look, either. Cats been brother. on milk cartons for a while. You, you find okay. them, man. <laughs> you find them, man. Now we're like, cats. I ain't seen in 
like 30 years, man. I'm like, yo, okay, he doing, you know, he doing good. That's cool. I, I, it's funny I, who you had on the other day, my man, um, my man Russell. I ain't seen. I know Russell yeah. back with Russell since we went to with the, with the McClansky. Mc, yeah. McClansky. I mean, we I played I played back with with with, with, with Russell and, and Little Lads back in the back. There you go. We, we had we we had Boogaloo, all them all them cats with us. I remember that's how back far we go back. I ain't seen him. You know, I followed him a back when he was at Manhattan, but I ain't seen him in a minute, man. So it was good to see he's doing good, man. So you're doing Yeah, he's on Facebook Live every Tuesday. Coach, uh, the show is called Transitional Tuesdays. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go check it out. That's the thing, man. I I, I done seen the – then got caught up on a lot of cats, man. So I, I appreciate that, man, for sure. Yeah, look, go on my IG Live yep. and scroll around. You okay. probably get it quicker. The show's quicker on my IG Live. Then on my feed because you probably gotta go through a lot. A lot but we yeah. go on my IGTV, that's where all the full interviews are. All right, cool, cool. I'll definitely right? We go all the way back down to Jerry Ice Reynolds and you know uh Coach Haskins and Norm Roberts and all those other people. Yeah. Um yeah. So what oh just just went right through my head when I was about to ask you. Uh mm, Okay, once I think about it and come back, I'm gonna show you a picture real quick. All right, cool. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna, we gonna do that real quick. But I definitely have one more thing to ask you uh, before. Y'all ready? 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 ready. <laughs> wow. Hey, 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 you see it? I see it, yes, sir. So I was trying to figure out where you got to stay from, but when you give me the pictures, I send him the pictures, right? Yeah. I think that was the that was the Trinidad State one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Well, look at this one right here. One. That's where you played against NC State right here. Yeah, against Navy Man at Navy Miller Garden. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, definitely. That's a good look, man. Yeah, nah, nah. We definitely gonna make sure and get that to you, man. Send me your address in the um in my DM, and we we'll get that out to you. Appreciate after you. we finish getting out a load of other pictures that we have uh to get out to people, man. Right. But um definitely, man. I, I want to make sure that again we give you flowers, man, to celebrate you, man. Appreciate One of the toughest you. point guards in New York City history, man. Adolphus Gaffney, man, for sure. Salute. Appreciate it, my brother. No doubt, no doubt. Make some noise for that, man. For sure. For sure. So, yo, man, I want to keep you too long, man. I'm going to wrap this up, man. You enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you for coming on the show. I'm up. And I appreciate I'm up. you, brother. Appreciate it, man. Good, look, good looking out, G. Appreciate it. That's right, man. And look, anything we can do, man, anytime you want to come on. And look, man, we want to do a, uh, we could do a father son. Thing we did one with uh Lavar Falk and his right. son yeah. Isaiah Falk. I saw, that. I saw that, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So whenever you know y'all guys get it right, like yo, let's go on basketball heads, man. Let's do that. You know what I'm saying? We can yeah, we, we gotta, do that real we gotta, soon. We gotta make sure these jokers can play, man. That's the whole thing, man. These kids is kids is out here chomping at the bit, man. And UConn got a lot of a lot of energy coming with them right now, brother. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe and this is a high school show, so I always tell people. I always put the high school up. You know, people are like, why I put my count? Listen, this is a high school basketball show, right? right? But I didn't want to start with the young good dudes because they don't really have a story yet, nah, nah. right? They, now, they, I want to get to them. I'll go to their games. I'm going to interview them. Some I'll have come on. Right. But I need these guys who have stories and who have done something with their life so these younger guys can look and say, damn, who won it? I'm going to take something from him. I'm going to take something from him. I'm going to take this lesson from him. But we need some place where these people, where these guys can study. Yeah, that, but that, yeah. And it's not just watching video. Yeah, but sometimes you got to sit down and listen to a conversation. 
and say, damn, you know what? what? I didn't know this. That's what we did. That's because that's what we did, man. I mean, I learned from. I mean, I learned. I learned a little from Pearl. I learned a little from Kenny. I learned a little from my man Gene. Gene Smith. That's my actually Gene Smith is my um, is Jalen's godfather. That's my man. So uh, wow. Yeah, no, no, yeah, that's that, that, and that's one of the things I grew up like. I don't. It, the crazy story. Put the story idolizing them like you know like that's how I played defense like I, I watched them whatever and then I was working for working for started working out for Nike he was out there um and we we wound up playing in a pro am and went up against them he trying to rip me I'm laughing at him he laugh he, 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 he try you know Gene Smith is physical as long as long as we yes go out, we, we go out after to have a drink or two fast forward two years later he he moved back to Jersey I moved back to Jersey with Nike and we've been boys ever since man that's my guy. That's my guy. That's my guy. So best defensive guard of all time, baby. Except when he played Pearl. I got you. Yeah, I got him. Yeah. <laughs> look, look, and, and, I, and, I, and listen. I'm still, I'm still going after Mark Jackson and Kenny Smith as well. Yeah. Need all of New York City great guards. Yeah. Pearl not here no more. We can't get Pearl and Davidson not here. Yeah. But Buck, we. Buck, I want to get yeah. make sure I get all the guys up here, man. Yeah. No doubt. That's no right. Doubt. No doubt. All right. Bro. All right, man. Be good. Have man. a good Appreciate one, it, brother. For sure. Peace.